Joey from dayjobhacks.com. Today I'm going to go inside one of my search ads campaigns and we're going to optimize it. How to optimize search ads campaigns to turn them profitable. We're going to go into one of my campaigns where I spent $1,200 in the last five days and pretty much made a little bit of profit so far, but I want to make a lot more profit. We're going to go in and look at the data, how I would optimize my search campaigns when starting out the campaign, um, some of the things that I consider with the data that I've received and what tools I use to do that. So if you're running any type of search ads campaigns, this video should help you in seeing what other people are doing to optimize. But again, if you see anything I'm missing, please comment below. Tell me how I might be able to improve my own campaign here okay so hopefully you enjoy these types of videos if you do don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's go into my computer and have a look at this campaign we're gonna talk about search ads and how to optimize search ads all right welcome to the inside of my computer here this is inside the Microsoft ad account I'm using it's a search ads network uh, I also do a lot of Google ads and Facebook ads on my channel as well as in our training at powerhouseaffiliate.com. If you want some more of those resources to find out how I got to this point where I'm spending money and making profits with CPA marketing, then simply come to the YouTube channel, search for Google or Bing or whatever else you want to do, or check out our membership information inside Powerhouse Affiliate where we do have some specific training especially on Google and Bing and other traffic sources inside our webinar section here. You'll see that we have done a recent training on Google ads, how to run Google ads as an affiliate marketer running offers similar to what I'm doing today. We also have case studies in here that you can see. I've done a Microsoft ads e-commerce offer case study, which is basically showing exactly how I set all of this up. Know that it is an e-commerce offer. It is a gadget and I'm running it. I'm getting paid roughly $35 us per conversion and i am spending this money in canadian dollars so at, even though it says 36 cpa that's what it's cost me per conversion this is canadian dollars 35 dollars us works out to uh roughly we'll say 45 dollars maybe or, or somewhere around there so i'm actually making a profit but i'm not making enough profit and in fact if i go back to the last five days it's actually a little lower so we're going to optimize this campaign. We're going to go through the steps that I'm going to take. We're going to talk about the data, how to make sure data is correct. So the first step I'm going to do here is I'm going to start at the highest level. A lot of people, especially um, on YouTube, are saying you start at the keyword level. In my opinion, you don't start at the keyword level. Um, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, please watch my other videos. I'm not going to explain what keywords are and what how to find keywords, all that stuff. You should know that if you're watching how to optimize your ads, okay? Um, so again, watch those other trainings. But anyway, so what I'm saying here is I want to make sure my data matches. So we're going to go from Monday till today. So I'm going to change these stats to 22 to 26. So February 22 to 26. Today is Friday. Um, so I'm actually doing this on the fly here and you can see now my CPA has gone up to 47 Canadian So I'm losing about we'll say two dollars per conversion right now on 22 conversions in the last five days So I need to optimize this and get it to a point So I haven't done anything and that's the thing the first thing is given enough data to actually make decisions So I've actually let this run Since February 22nd for four days a lot of people are sitting here you know, making changes every hour or every day on their campaign and they're not getting any information and that's how they fail. So make sure you're giving it enough data. So the next step I wanna do is I wanna make sure I have a third party tracker to make sure I'm reading the right data. So to do that, I use CPV Lab Pro. Um, if you're not using a third party tracker, you're setting yourself up for disaster because there's probably more than 22 conversions here. Um, because Bing is going to be missing conversions. The reason why I do conversion tracking on Bing so I can get these conversions is so I can make some general decisions around the information on Bing, but really to get to the real raw data, you have to track it yourself. So let's look at the campaign stats here for the search gadget campaign from the 22nd to the 26th. It says 19 conversions, but I'm gonna update the data here. I'm running it through a CPA network and if you're using a, a tool like CPV Lab Pro, dayjobhacks.com slash CPV Lab Pro, and you can actually check it out. They have a whole bunch of training. So anyway, what I'm doing is I'm actually tracking all of my keywords and all of my ads through this platform so that I can get my own data. And then all of the conversions that register on the CPA network are passing, uh, are getting uh, information as well from this tracker so I can update my conversions. And to do that, I'm going to 
grab my conversion data from my CPA network and I'm gonna update my conversions here. So I'm just gonna do that now quickly so that I can make sure, and I've already copied all the sub IDs. So these are all the sub IDs that have converted over the last five days from my CPA network. I can grab that sub ID report from my CPA network. I'm gonna save it and let's see if that changes the number of conversions now as you can see, now it says 24 conversions inside CPV Lab Pro. So 24 here and Microsoft is saying 22. So there's two conversions that are missing. So I need to make sure I understand the data and, and making sure that it's accurate, okay? So I'm gonna be relying more on my third party tracker because it's showing more conversions. However, I'm still going to be using some of the data here inside Bing basing my decisions on some other data that I can't get in my third party tracker. So for example, the first thing I'm going to look at is my ad group level. So I'm gonna click on ad groups. And one of the pieces of data that I can't really get well enough in my uh, third party tracker is the segmentation uh, ability here. So what I wanna do first is basically segment some of these higher level areas that I want to focus on. So I can I can go by time of day and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to do that yet. What I want to do is look at the network first. Now I've done a video previously on search partners, okay? So you can see here I'm running search partners on this campaign as well as Bing and Yahoo search as well as AOL search. Now if you want to watch another video about search partners, you're going to see that I spoke about the fact that I am getting conversions on the search partners when before I thought you couldn't. In fact, you can see here the CPA is lower on the search partners than on Bing uh, and Yahoo search. While they're still very close, they're a little above my CPA. So this isn't going to really affect yet uh, if I was to pause one of these major um, pieces here. Um, so I'm gonna keep that going and keep them both going, but it's good to keep an eye on this. And inside my third party tracker, I can start looking at specific partners that might be eating up my budget so I can bring down the price that I'm paying on the whole network of syndicated search partners. For example, if I come in here and I choose options, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to select the referrer domain, okay? And what I can see now at the higher level is some of these are getting a lot of clicks, 37 clicks here, zero conversions, 32 clicks here, zero conversions. And this is the site, okay? This is the referring domain, search it, or our search Yahoo. This one here is a little sketch. Uh, this one here has 14 clicks, zero landing page clicks, and nobody clicked through my landing page. So these are the types of placements that I can start blocking inside of my Bing Ads account. So this is one of the steps I'm gonna take, is I'm gonna go through each of these and find out which ones are eating up the budget and getting zero conversions and I'm going to be pausing those. So to do that, I would just take that and come back into my settings and start blocking off these placements. So if I go to settings, I could just scroll down and add them here, okay? So I've had some account level ones before that I know just don't convert. So that's why they're in here. But I'm going to also add that search it one and just kind of show you an example of where I would start, okay? Now, let's look at something else here, um, and that's going to be device data. I'm gonna show you how to see which one is doing better here. So again, we can segment, and we're going to go to device type, and again, this is a higher level type of optimization that I do, and you can see why I've dropped computer right from the get-go. It's costing me almost $70 for a conversion. So I should only be running on mobile here. So I need to pause my desktop ads and run more specific to mobile traffic. So again, I will go into settings and I'm gonna change this. And if I wanna run desktop, perhaps I'll run it in a separate campaign and drop the, the bid more, okay? You can also do that here at this level where I can drop the bid uh, by percentage. But here I'm going to actually just decrease it by pretty much 100%. I just wanna run mobile on this one for now. So I've saved that, now there's a big change and I haven't even touched the keywords yet, okay? These are big changes to the campaign that should help just overall before I start getting into the nitty gritty data. 
So another section I'd like to show here is segmenting by your top versus other positions. So basically, are your ads at the top of the page or are they at other positions? Now, this is very important because some campaigns convert better lower in the results, okay? And some campaigns convert better at the top. So you really should understand that and see where you're converting. In this case, my ads at the top are converting more and better than the, the ads in lower positions. As you can see here, the top ads um, in search partners is coming in at a 48 CPA. Other positions are lower CPA, but I'm getting no conversions and no clicks, okay? Um, on the actual Bing network, the top position is getting a 46.93 CPA, while the other positions are getting less conversions and a higher CPA. So in this case, I'm going to be aiming for a more competitive bid. So I, I think my bids are fine to keep me at that top position. Sometimes the other positions are definitely converting better. Most times they are, to be honest. Positions three and four convert better because people are doing their research. Um, first, they're looking at the first couple results and then they're coming back to their search results and they're looking for one more maybe article about this thing they want to buy before they choose to buy it. And that's where position three and four comes in and oftentimes converts better. This time though, my, my keywords are the reason why the top results are working here. So we're getting, getting, we're getting into the keywords now. You can see that I'm using discount related keywords, okay? Like 50% discount or um, best discount code for this product or whatever. So people are already buying. That's why the top position is working here. Um, so depending on the strategy of your marketing angle, um, the, the top position is often um, working better. For, like, like I said, if I'm using sales type type of keywords and people are already, they've already done their research and now they're looking for a discount, then top position is where you want to be. Now a couple more higher level, posi uh, higher level pieces of data we want to look at first before we get into the keywords is the locations, okay? So you can look at locations and see if anything is really standing out where there's one location that just is never converting, okay? Um, so to do that, you can come into your location data and you can actually do a, a report here that shows the state. I'm gonna come in here to user location report. And I wanna see if there's any states that are getting a lot of clicks, but not converting. And really, again, not a whole bunch of data yet, but you can see um, this data here and you wanna keep an eye on it and make sure, I'm gonna customize this so I'm taking out the cities. I'm gonna modify the columns here and take out city and the metro area. Just want to go with state here so i'm just going to apply that for a second and now you can see i can see just the states here um texas is converting california georgia 87 clicks no conversions might want to keep an eye on that might not pause it yet but it's something i want to consider later maybe want to have more data um, and maybe i've spent more money and now i want to start pausing these locations i can go into my settings and start uh, removing locations and, and excluding them from this campaign. So make sure you're checking these areas um, especially. Uh, ad schedule again, you can start optimizing day parting, what time of day everything is converting, but too early for me right now to do that. I've only ran for five days. I'm gonna give it a month's data before I start getting into this location and ad schedule or a, a lot of spend at least um, to get that data. Okay, now let's get into the keywords and talk about that briefly and we'll move on from there. So coming into the keywords, when it comes to keyword data, I'm not relying on Bing ads for that data, okay? Or any other traffic platform that I'm running search ads. I'm relying more on my more accurate data, which is in CPV Lab Pro in this case, or whatever third-party tracker. Because you can see here, again, only 22 conversions, but over on my campaign stats, I can change this refer domain to show me all of the keywords simply by clicking on keyword and unclicking on refer domain. So let's do that now. And now I can find out the exact keyword I'm bidding on inside my data. All of the keywords over here are here, and now I can see more accurately which one I'm bidding on and I can come over here and I can either pause it or increase the bid or change the match type, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna search how many visitors, so I've sorted it by visitors and you can see one keyword right here, 47 clicks. Again, not a lot of data yet because I'm spreading it out amongst many keywords. If you're running on a lower budget, you wanna have maybe 20 to 50 keywords. In this case, I have like 500 keywords. So I'm still right in the infancy of this campaign and I'm just starting out. So 
but this one I'm going to pause. It's only costing me money and I have conversions elsewhere. Why would I bother wasting any more money? I know 47 people came here, didn't even buy anything, so bye-bye. I'm gonna take that keyword and I'm gonna come over to Bing and I'm going to pause it by just clicking on the little pause button, okay? That's an example of how to do that. Um, so you're gonna go through all of your data and you're gonna find those keywords, okay? Um, another thing I'm going to be looking at in my third-party tracker, which is a higher level position here, is the landing page, okay? Again, um, I'm going to be pausing campaigns. You should always be split testing a, a landing page, okay? Like, that is the key to success, is split testing everything, okay? So your landing page always needs to be tested. You can see here I'm running one at uh, roughly 80% and one at 20%. And the one at 20% still can't beat the control page. So the control page will always be running the most, but I'm always split testing to try and find something better. So make sure you're split testing landing pages and ads, because you can see here, there's one ad here that is converting at 2.48%. And I've got four different ads that I've tested, but one still keeps continuing to win. So test your ads as well. Back to the keyword stuff inside Microsoft. What you want to look at especially is the search terms report, okay? So up here you can click on search terms. And what we want to look at, these are the actual keywords that people are searching, not the ones we're bidding on. And this is important because a lot of times you'll find keywords in here that you are not bidding on, but they are converting. And how do you know if you're bidding on them or not? Well, this added slash excluded column right here is important because it tells you none. Right here it says none. It means I'm not bidding on that keyword. However, it did get two conversions. That means I need to add that to my campaign. It's an exact match, okay? It's telling me what match type. Somebody has been coming in and searching this exact keyword, exact match, and it's converted twice. And by the looks of it, it's a cost that is actually profitable for my campaign. So I need to, to collect that. There's two more here that converted that I'm not bidding on. These are keywords that they have found because I'm running broad match. I always run broad match or phrase match at the start of my campaigns. Then I come in and I optimize further by finding these exact match keywords, adding them to, to my campaign to make sure I'm getting my bids in on the auction uh, every single time somebody searches that. So again, that's a great way to find keywords for your campaign is start out broad and phrase and then find your exact match later. All right, there you have it. That is how I've been optimizing my search campaigns. If you have any comments, please comment below. Tell me what I'm missing, what maybe I've done right or wrong. Um, as a recap, I'm basically starting at the higher level of my campaigns. I'm segmenting based on the network, where they're being delivered. I'm segmenting based on the age and demographics, locations, um, mobile device versus desktop. And then I'm getting more into the nitty gritty stuff, which is the landing pages, the ads, the keywords, okay? Um, maybe you do it differently. Maybe you start at the keywords. Do you find it works better? Comment below, tell me how you've been optimizing your search campaigns. If you have any other questions, make sure you post them down below or comments and we'll see you in the next videos.